I describe myself as a guy who likes to go fishing. Carl's an avid fisherman, and it may seem a contradiction with an environmentalist and somebody trying to save the oceans. He interacts with fishermen. He wants to make sure that we are protecting um, our resources so that they'll be around for the future. Born in Brooklyn, Dr. Carl Safina's early life was remarkably different from a typical city kid's. His father, Carlo Safina, an avid fisherman as well, fostered in his son a lifelong fascination with the natural world. I saw my first hawk, and I was awestruck and deeply impressed at the abilities that animals have. The way my husband presented things was what Carl learned, a quiet way, not shoving anything down anybody's throat, but just to open their eyes and their ears. And he said, you know, Dad, he said, I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. My husband's answer was, just go with your heart. And look where it took him. Earning a PhD in ecology from Rutgers, Safina spent the first part of his career studying seabirds as well as fighting illegal waterway dumping and unsustainable fishing practices. In 1990, he founded the Living Oceans Program for the National Audubon Society. Creating a mix of hard science with compassionate communication, Safina has had significant success in re-establishing a number of fish populations. Carl is a highly regarded, uh, distinguished uh, scientist and ecologist by training. So he understands the ocean, the life in the ocean, how it all works, uh, the role that humans have had in exploiting the oceans. In 2003, Safina co-founded the Blue Ocean Institute, an organization dedicated to inspiring ocean conservation through science, art, and literature. But Safina has made perhaps his most significant contribution to conservation as an award-winning author of novels on the issues that threaten the world's waterways. His books are really sort of poetry in motion. That's very appealing. That's a gift Carl Safina has, I think, been able to take that depth of scientific knowledge and find ways of communicating it. Carl is sort of a natural-born writer, and everything he does is lyrical. I can't think of anyone now who's writing, who's making a greater contribution in natural history. I've talked to people that said that they cried reading Carl's books. And they're fundamentally the science, but they're interwoven with stories. Any issue in the ocean that you want to talk about, you can basically get to if you have an albatross as your traveling companion. Similarly with leatherback turtles. I chose these animals as vehicles to talk about how the ocean is changing and what those changes mean for wildlife and for people. In early 2010, Devastating changes came when an oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico became the largest in U.S. history. Safina acted quickly, communicating how the disaster could affect the already fragile balance in the planet's ecosystems. Just flying directly over the blowout site and seeing that firsthand, the amount of oil there was really staggering. There are lots and lots of people talking about how many gallons of oil they think they're getting, how many they're not getting, these kinds of things. They don't really have any sense of what is breeding there, how fish spawn, the, the fragility of eggs and larvae, the fact that these birds are crossing the Gulf of Mexico from the Yucatan at this time and will fan across the continent. Safina plans to turn what he's learned in the Gulf of Mexico into his next book, a story about the ecological effects of the spill and the fundamental fear that has been created by it. I'm trying to give people hope. I'm trying to tell everybody how much is at stake, how much of the world is still alive and worth saving, and how dangerous the trends are and how much we are poised to lose. I like the way Carl looks at the world, and I like the intensity he brings to it. And I love the fact that Carl makes no apologies for engaging us emotionally in issues that definitely need us to care. He's a simple guy. A lot of it has to do with humility. He doesn't push you. He puts you in a position to push yourself. He's a, he's a good teacher. I wish that my husband could be alive today to see the accomplishments where Carl has gone with everything that he loved to do in his life. He'd be bursting. 
Carl's a hero for the environment. And I just am curious to see what happens next. <laughs>